Good afternoon. Welcome to Mitre Attack, the Play at Home edition in South Pacific with Katie Nichols and Ryan Kovar. Before we begin, a few brief notes. Stop by the business hall located in Mandalay Bay, Oceanside, and Shoreline Ballrooms on level two during the day and for the welcome reception at 5.30 p.m. tonight. The Black Hat Arsenal is in the business hall on level two. Please join us for the Pony Awards in Lagoon JKL at 6.30 p.m. Please, everyone, put your phone on vibrate. That way, the rest of us can ignore it while you wait for your voicemail to pick up. And now, Katie Nichols and Ryan Kovar. Thank you so much for the intro, and thank you all for coming. I'm Katie, this is uh, Ryan, and this is Mitre Attack, the Play at Home edition, where we're gonna walk you through a story of a team who uses attack. Before we do, a little note from my legal department. I lie often. Nothing I talk about today is gonna be real. There is no software, it's all vaporware. Uh, Mitre doesn't uh, really sponsor anything I'm gonna say, so just keep that in mind. Don't buy software on what I'm about to say. Who are we? As he said, I'm Katie. I work for a company called the MITRE Corporation. If you haven't heard of MITRE, it's a nonprofit that works in the public interest. Um, we do cool work for government as well as research and development projects like Attack. And my role there is as the threat intelligence lead for the Attack team, where I talk to folks like you about Attack and how you can use it. Um, I have a good side hustle. Everyone should have a nice side hustle. Mine is teaching for SANS, uh, Forensics 578, Cyber Threat Intelligence. So that keeps me busy. As you can tell, uh, my passion is threat intel. I've been doing that for over 10 years at the intersection of defense and intel, working in a lot of security operations centers. I'm also really passionate about educating the next generation of young women to kind of fill in. We need more people in this community to do this work. So I'm the program manager for the Cyber Jitsu Girls Academy, which is all about teaching girls and inspiring them to get involved in STEM program in Northern Virginia. I also like to bake and eat chocolate things, which I balance by crossfitting and I'm legally required to tell you that I crossed it in from the first five minutes of meeting you, so. And we're, we're at I two minutes, that. so she already hit that pretty well. Ryan Kovar, I'm a principal security strategist at Splunk. Um, I'm a blue teamer through and through. That's what I love to do. Uh, I was a network, um, ran, helped run a cyber counterintelligence fusion cell at DARPA before I came to Splunk. I do a lot of fun things around traveling the world, trying to fix problems, look for cool security issues and do some research and development on it. I also really hate printers, and if you ever ask me to print something, I will cry. So good to know. Second off, we are gonna be using Splunk throughout this presentation. Uh, think of this as the canvas that we're going to paint our narrative upon. Many of you do use Splunk at home, some don't. Uh, this is really just a way to show the techni techniques and the tactics that we're gonna be talking about today, and this is how we're gonna paint our story. So use whatever you want. The concepts apply everywhere. We're just gonna use Splunk because they pay for like 90% of my wardrobe at this point, so we're gonna keep it there. Agenda, we're gonna tell a story. I think the best way to educate, to describe anything is to go through a narrative, and that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna talk about a small company called Frothly. Then we're gonna talk about how it all went wrong. They thought things were good, and then it did not go so well. And then we're gonna fix them, we're gonna pass go and collect 200 TTPs, which will be pretty awesome. <laughs> First off, some of you have probably heard of Attack. I, I've had some conversations in the hallway ahead of time about people who knew it, didn't know it. Uh, there's some people who are pretty angry about Attack. We're gonna address that. Some people love it, but didn't get everything out of it that they kind of hoped. Uh, so we're gonna really talk today. The story is gonna be about how you use it and overcome some of those common pitfalls and issues that you may have seen. So you can think of this as a story. We're gonna be telling a never-ending story. Do, 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 do. And if you are a certain age bracket, you're not gonna get that song out of your head for a week. If you're outside those whiskers, I'm sorry, it's on YouTube. So, the story. Frothly, very small startup in San Francisco. They do brewery equipment, they make really awesome, innovative beers. They are just full of cool things and they're doing the best they can and they have a very small but awesome cybersecurity team. So let's meet each of our characters from Frothly and introduce you to some of their problems that we can see if attack can help them out with. First up, we have Grace Hoppy, our empowered, awesome female CEO. And her challenge is she's not totally sure how her networks are defended at Frothly. And that makes her a little bit insecure. So you might have met some executives or leaders like this who 
as soon as they see something in the news, they kind of shoot you off an email, call you at eight o'clock at night. What's happening with this? Because you might even be that executive. You might be that executive. No judgment. We get it. You're insecure. You're uncomfortable. So that's Grace, our CEO. Next up, Mallory Krausen from Threat Intel team. So Mallory, she's well-intentioned. She's a great analyst, but she's sort of stuck in this rut of just scanning networks and gathering IP addresses, domain names, hash values, and they found some value there, but she's not really sure what else she can do for Threat Intel. So that's Mallory from the Threat Intel team. Next up, Alice, our network defender extraordinaire. So she has a bunch of data. She has a SEM, she has these data sources, but she's kind of drowning in alerts. And she has all the alerts in the world, but isn't able to catch real adversaries. So she has a data and alerting problem as a defender. Last but not least, we have Kevin, our red teamer. He has a kind heart. He wants to help defenders and the blue team improve, but he's just not sure how. He's gone in, he's done red team operations in the past, but he can't really communicate how to help defense improve based on that. So that's Kevin rounding out our cast of four characters in Frothly. So breaking news, SS Hops and Ale has had a cyber attack by what appears to be an Iranian threat group. We're not positive about this, but this has caused some major issues to the possible global Hops and Ale network. And frankly, Grace is not happy. So what does she do? First thing off, sends an email to our threat intelligence analyst, Mallory. Mallory, I need you to find out how this will impact us and how we're defended. What are we gonna do, right? We've all gotten this email. Somebody wakes up, watches Fox News, freaks out, you get that email. And so Mallory is a threat analyst. She's given this tasking, hey, are we affected by any Iranian groups? And she hasn't really been tracking that. She's tracked one or two you know, criminal groups that uh, has targeted Frothly in the past. So she has to figure out how do I find out who these Iranian threat groups are and can attack help her out in this? Like any good analyst, she does what I do, start with Google. Let's Google Iranian threat groups and see what pops out. Within her first few hits, there's this hit for this uh, MITRE attack thing, it's a groups thing, there's Iranian threat group, some keywords there. She clicks that link, not sure what it is, but it brings her to this page of different groups scans through that and sees, okay, oil rig is a suspected Iranian threat group, so maybe that's something that she might care about. Kitty, what, what is the deal with Iranian threat groups and oil rig? I, I just don't know what that is. If only there was a way to find out. If only. If only. Um, luckily there is. Mallory keeps reading. She takes a look at the oil rig group page. It's on the attack website. She reads a little bit of information, a little background about the targeting of this group some of the names that have had overlap with that uh, oil rig name, different techniques used. Not totally sure what those techniques are, but she keeps reading this group page, uh, goes down to the end, sees these references, clicks on a few of those, sees you know a lot of these great blog posts that many of you all write, scrolls to the end, sees, yeah, some IPs that she can action, some domain names, perfect. So then she sees this matrix thing, which is a little confusing. There's all these hyperlinks, there's all these names, tactics, techniques, it looks like a spreadsheet. It's the 20th anniversary of one of the best movies ever made, the only movie ever made named Matrix. And she doesn't really know what this is all about. So she keeps reading on the website and what she finds is, well, this matrix is just kind of a visualization of a larger knowledge base of adversary behaviors that is attacked. She reads more and finds out that this is maintained by MITRE. It's based on real world observations. Attack isn't meant to be a theoretical proof of concept. It's what real adversaries have done in the past or they're likely to do, cutting edge red teamers are doing. And there's value in that because from a threat intel perspective, we care about what adversaries are doing to help prioritize what we focus on. She also kind of looks at the matrix layout and sees their tactics across the top. These are the adversary's technical goals, things like how do they gain initial access? How do they establish persistence once they're in a network? How do they move laterally? Under each of those tactics are what are called techniques. That's how those tactics are achieved, how those goals are achieved. So for example, under the initial access tactic, spear phishing attachment would be a technique. 
And then the next level there, she sees some examples of different procedures, right? TTPs, tactics, techniques, and procedures. So, for example, spear phishing with an XLSX attachment would be a procedure. So she's kind of getting this idea, okay, attacks this knowledge base of different adversary behaviors, lots of techniques, and how can I maybe use this? So, back to email, what we all use every day. She, she fires off an email back to Grace, gives her some quick information from what she's learned. Because remember, this is a small company. They don't necessarily have enough money to pay for really good threat intelligence, so she's really depending on the open source resources, looking at those reference documents we talked about, and that's just a great place to start for her. She's really happy. She's able to go back to Grace and said, hey, turns out these Iranians who have taken over a, a tanker full of beer and ale and hops, that's totally a threat to us. We should do some more research. Goes to the technique section of the MITRE attack and then sends some of those over to Alice. Hey, block these indicators, right? We know what indicators are. Alice and Mallory are both huge fans of these lower level things, IPs, hashes, we know what to do. We know how to search for these, I got this. I'm not really quite sure what this TTP thing is, but we're gonna, we're gonna find out, All right? Alice takes a look, kind of goes into it, I've just looked through like 75 different IP addresses, I don't see any hits. And for those of you who've been around back when the day when the APT1 report dropped and your boss gave you 3,000 indicators to look through, uh, you kind of know this feeling, right? I'm not sure we're not compromised, but I don't see any indicators in our sim, so what's going on here? Um, that's really where this technique thing came in, and she's pretty interested in this, but really doesn't know much about it. So how does Alice, as a network defender, stop with her indicator hoarding and try to move towards detecting these techniques. Hungry, hungry hippo model of indicator hoarding. Move away from that towards detecting those behaviors. So she brings up that oil rig page and starts to scan through those techniques. Uh, maybe she's not familiar, but she starts to see, okay, discovery, these are the discovery tactic. As an adversary gets on a network, they have to figure out kind of where they are, what they can do. So she scans through, she recognizes commands like who am I, system owner user discovery, that's the technique there. She recognizes a few others like task lists, which is process discovery. So she clicks on that one, takes a closer look. A little more information about what this technique of process discovery is. And she's trying to figure out, well, how would I detect this on my network? That's a good question. So luckily she sees on the right side, there's this little data sources section that tells her, well, if you're trying to detect this technique, maybe check out process monitoring or process command line parameters. Yeah, maybe they don't have a ton on process monitoring, but she knows they do have a little bit of command line collection. Remember, she's drowning in her data. So maybe there's something that she can do there to kind of look at that process command line data, start to write detections on this one technique. So she goes right into her network here and finds out that, hey, turns out we collect event code 4688. If you're not familiar with that, go research it. It is awesome for anything around processes and command lines, really love it. And it turns out Alice has that. So she goes into her sim, she quickly writes a little, a little detection search here to create an alert, very simple. And she's smart, she knows she wants to go back and understand exactly what this is. So she puts in the description that, hey, this is for, you know, MITRE ATT&CK T1057 TaskList.exe. And you'll notice this is a very atomic, sort of search here. It is literally just looking for the words tasklist.exe. That's what's in the MITRE ATT&CK framework. That's what she can see. And then she does this 41 more times, because there's 41 more techniques within MITRE ATT&CK that she can write uh, techniques for, or signatures for in her sim. And so she goes down that line. If there's a technique, if there's a T, she now has a sim rule all the way down. So hey, we're awesome. We're awesome. 41 techniques. 41 techniques. She's looked at the attack website and she's found this tool called the Attack Navigator that can help visualize what they know about different techniques. So they've been through all those 41 techniques. They've written at least one detection for each of those. So they fill in green for each of those techniques. 244 enterprise attack techniques and they fill in all 41 with green. Of course, they have to follow up with Grace because she's like, are we protected against this Iranian threat? So they brief it to Grace. Grace briefs the board. We are 100% protected 100%. against oil rig, our number one threat. We are good to go. I think they're fine. I think they're good, but. I think everything's fine here. Yeah. But they are a full team. Like we said, this is actually, although a small team, they really got their stuff together. So they turn to their red team and they say, Kevin, 
can you actually start testing these similars that we've created, these searches? Can you actually find these detections? Can you make sure that we're triggering the right things? So Kevin does some work, he looks around, he Googles red team and attack, and he finds this awesome open source project called Atomic Red Team. And this is a really cool project that actually will map all the TTPs in attack to things that real world red teamers, uh, partly led by the great group over at Red Canary, will actually go through and find ways to actually make sure that a blue team can see things in their sim or detect or test these TTPs in attack. And it's really cool. So he goes through it. And not surprisingly, as we've kept talking about, the way to find task list is, is by actually running task list. So he does that. So he runs that and he goes to about 30 boxes and he runs task lists on all these Windows servers. And then sure enough, those incredible alerts that Alice created, they pop up. He even went a little crazy, ran PS. Turns out Alice had 41 TTPs and she wrote one for PS too. So we are, we are covered. We're doing good here. Right? All the attacks were detected when we emulated the oil rig adversary using Atomic Red Team. Perfect. So I'm pretty happy. At this point, they're saying, hey, we did our job. We, everything's fine. We got MITRE going. We did Atomic Red Team. We wrote some SIM searches. The data's coming in. This is gravy, baby. We're good to go. Everything's all good until the dominoes start to fall one by one. Grace gets a call early in the morning from FBI Special Agent Steve. Steve says, yeah, sorry, Grace, Frothley is pwned. So uh, good luck with that. So sorry about that. Uh, you thought you were covered? Nope, you're totally compromised. Thanks, Steve. Turns out, although they were doing really good on protecting against oil rig, there's a completely fictional made up APT group that attacked them called Taedong Gong. They had no clue about this, mostly because I made it up earlier this year. But the point is, they were attacked by these guys. They had no clue. And if you look at the diamond model for these sort of folks, for the Taedong Gong adversary, you'll actually notice there's some crossover in their capabilities. If you were to map oil rig and Taedong Gong, there'd be about a 20 or 30 percent overlap of attack techniques and tactics that they're actually using. But that's not 100 percent overlap. So although Frothley did really well defending against oil rig. They completely missed the boat on these other adversary groups that they didn't pay any attention to because they were so dialed in to that oil rig conversation. So now the Frothley team is kind of feeling like this. And I'm not going to lie, we've heard from maybe some of you in the room. I know Ryan's heard from organizations and teams who've used attack and they're like, why did we ever use this in the first place? This is not helpful. This is not what we wanted. Why are we here? I attacked all my data and I have nothing to show for it. Sad day. But the good news is you can move past this. Maybe you're kind of flipping the game board. You've implemented an attack and you're really unhappy. Now what do you do? So let's talk about what went wrong. And this is where we're going to break the fourth wall a little bit of our, our narration here of this fictional company with a fictional APT group. Um, we're going to actually take this and try to describe how we see for awfully went wrong how they can fix it. And this is all based on these stories and these narratives and these issues that Katie and I have seen over the last two years as we've watched people try to implement attack and either fail or just not get the point of it or be really confused of, I logged on, there's a matrix, there's 9,000 pages of documentation and I really don't understand what I'm supposed to do, right? So let's go step by step here. First off, Grace, we're saying CXO, she's a CEO. The reality is it doesn't matter. What Grace is, is she's a leader. Right? So what we're thinking here is the team lead, the CISO, the CTO. It might be a manager of a thousand people. It could be you wearing a whole bunch of different hats. Right? But the point is, when she went through this exercise, she saw all this green. That's what her team communicated to her. And she did not actually have a secure network. And on top of that, she's not really that technical anymore. It's been a long time. So she doesn't know all the work they're talking about. She isn't really sure what's going on. So she had a really false sense of security based on the communication coming from her team. On the threat intel side, Mallory, the CTI analyst, she did a good job looking into oil rig. She kind of provided those indicators to the defenders. But when Taedong Gong came in, she didn't know how to respond to that. They weren't tracking that threat. So Every organization has many different threats. She couldn't follow up, didn't really know how to action those new threats and kind of adjust to that as they came in. 
Alice is a badass network defender, right? She knows what she's doing. She took attack, she looked for those indicators, she found no IP addresses, and she went down that list of 41 specific techniques and wrote a similar, a sim search for each one of those. And she still had problems. And she also didn't really understand what data she needed for all of these. So she had gaps in her defenses, and she started getting drowned by alerts, because it turns out that people do run taskless.exe, and she's not quite sure what she can do now. And then last but not least, Kevin, the red teamer, you know, he did his tests. He tested task list, PS, and all the alerts fired for the defenders. Wasn't that kind of the point? Well, he didn't test beyond those two detections, those two procedures, and then he also didn't work with the, with the blue team. He just kind of hit it over PS list, PS and task list, and they got all those alerts, and then he just let it go. Yep. He thought maybe there was an issue, maybe there's something more they needed to do, but didn't follow up didn't work with the blue team to drive improvements. So let's work on getting Frothly back on track. And for those of you who don't work for Frothly, which hopefully is none of you for trademark issues, um, just put yourself in the shoes of Frothly as we go through these different personas. So how can a CSO, CEO, a team lead, a manager, better understand their risk using attack? To me, risk, it's all about kind of knowing what your threats are, where you're vulnerable, where those gaps are. And as a lead, that should be one of your main concerns. How can attack help you there? And what can Grace kind of get out of attack? First thing to do, we recommend communicating confidence levels. So on the traditional Intel side, we, we talk a lot about communicating confidence, words of uncertainty. If I say I'm almost certain, that's very different than if I say likely. And we need to do that with detections as well. So that's really where the team went wrong early on. You know, they said, we're green, we're good to go, we're 100%, but you can never be that confident. So we recommend, instead of that stoplight chart, that red, yellow, and green, it can be easy for execs to understand that maybe it's a little bit misleading. Maybe a better way to do it, and a hat tip to our friend Olaf, who recommended this as well, use a single color, use darker and lighter shades. So here, if we have no detections, we're not at all confident that we would detect that technique, give it a zero, it's white. If we're very confident, it's highly likely that we would detect a certain technique, let's give that a five. But even when there's a five, that doesn't mean we're done. And a shout out to Kyle Rainey, who wrote a blog on this from Red Canary as well, you're never really done. Adversaries are always changing. We're always gonna have to be keeping up writing new detections. So just realizing it's a range of confidence levels, but a five doesn't mean you're 100% covered, doesn't mean you're done. The other thing that Grace or a lead can help drive is integration of different teams. We talk about attack as a common language, and different teams can use it to communicate with each other. So think of our three teams in this situation, red team, CTI, and defenders. Each of those teams has something that the others need, it's very Hunger Games-esque. Whether it's an understanding of threats, whether it's what detections they're seeing of actual threats, or what gaps from the red team perspective. Attack can be that common language, but those three teams, or even more teams within a SOC, within a network defense organization, can use to communicate back and forth. They also can use attack to communicate up to their lead, to their executive, about an understanding of risk. Using that framework, that common language of attack, you can start to map out where are our threats, what behaviors are they using, and then where are those gaps? And to me, that's what risk is all about. And as you go through this process, you saw how Frothly started with email. And I'm almost positive that's how 90% of the people in the audience are going to start with attack and communicating across teams. That's a wonderful way to do it. You start up there, right? Start with email, sending things back and forth, and then you move to something like Excel, which I personally hate, but seeing people in the CTI industry seem to absolutely love it. We're gonna move on from there, though. If you use something like Excel, you can do a collaborative on it, you can track different groups, you can see where the, where the gaps in your network are, you can write macros to have shades of blue all over the place, and this is a really, really effective way of using attack to collaborate across these teams. Which the other great thing about this is it's relatively cheap. You don't have to do a lot of work, you just have to have someone who understands how to do macros and uh, formulas in Excel, so you're good to go. When you're ready to accelerate past that, 
you go into something that's a little bit more automated. You find a tool that has an API. You find something that all the different teams can write tooling in to communicate across and update each other automatically and in real time as they go through. So if we look back at this slide, you'll notice there's a triangle there. And one thing I love about attack that I don't see a lot of people understanding is you can come in at any part of these personas, right? Attacker or the red teamer, the blue team, the CTI analyst or even executive, each person has a way to jump in and add value and get what they need out of it. And when you're using an automated tool, something like Jira, where it turns into just a nice loop as people are kind of adding and putting things in, you really embrace that methodology and everyone can get use out of the tool. At Splunk, we wrote something, a uh, good friend of mine, David Verve and Johan wrote this. It's a MITRE attack matrix that's generated off the data inside of your SIM. Um, and what it can show you is a whole bunch of information. So using Olaf's blue, once again, you can see if it's dark blue, that means we have high confidence that we not only have the data in our system to detect things, but we also have signatures or similars in there to actually detect off that data. If we do a little bit of a close up here, you can see the little red, little red icon up there. That means we're actually looking at an oil rig TTP because we filtered by that. We can see the different TTPs available, the signatures and the data that's available. And this is really valuable. Uh, you can really go through your data, find where your gaps are, find what adversaries you're interested in, and it's all just using the backend information in your sim. Next up, moving on to the threat intel team. How can they use attack to action new threats, to bring in, you know, whatever adversary is the adversary of the day, whatever's compromised their org, track on that new threat using attack? Attack has a lot of different techniques. We have 244 in enterprise attack. Our team works constantly to try to update that. We're never going to have everything adversaries are doing in attack. We're just not. And we've chosen kind of a specific methodology of what we intend to focus on. So it's fine if you want to add on to it. Um, on our website, we have a lot of examples of groups and software. We pull those. Um, I work with a team to map those open source blog posts many of you have written to attack, but that's just a sampling of what's out there. Not everything is in open source, nor should it be. So you and your own team, your own CTI analysts and incident responders will have your own data. Map that and start to build out your own threat library of data mapped to attack. So throughout this presentation, we mentioned that um, the examples we give are inspired by real organizations. In this section, we wanted to bring you real examples from a real organization, Deloitte, who was kind enough to let me share with you what they've been doing to build out their own threat library. Pretty cool. So what they do is they have different groups, different software pages, campaigns, incidents that they've mapped to different techniques. So here's an example, Karkov, a backdoor. They have a description, and then they list different techniques and what campaign it's associated with. What they can do is, as they start gathering this data over time, start to aggregate. What are the most commonly used techniques for the adversaries they care about? It's important to emphasize that no data set's gonna be perfect. Every data set has bias, but it can give you a place to start. Again, 244 techniques in enterprise attack is kind of a lot, but over a sampling of 2019 dates, they had these top 14 techniques that were most common amongst the threats they care about in their library. So a great place to start if you're looking to pass to defenders, make that threat-informed defense. The other thing you can do is build on attack. Again, we take a very specific approach. We've out, laid out our methodology and you have different threats. You might have different use cases, different requirements. So it's perfectly fine to take the attack methodology and make your own, build on it, add to it. So you might have noticed in that Karkov page from the Deloitte team, there were these different techniques here, DTTT and then T1001, which is kind of the traditional attack technique ID format. So what the Deloitte team has done is they've said, cool, we're gonna use the MITRE attack techniques, those traditional technique IDs, but then there are some techniques that we care about tracking that aren't in attack. Let's give those an internal ID and let's use those to track our threats because we care about those, even though they're not in attack. So one example of those, um, one of those techniques, DNS tunneling. Um, adversaries might use SSH, HTTP, and tunnel that over DNS. So this was something that they felt like they wanted to track for threats they care about. And so they mapped it back to kind of the broader attack technique, custom command and control protocol. 
to help build that common language if they're talking to others, but for their use case, they wanted a more granular sub-technique. Now I should mention, right now, sub-techniques are just something Deloitte's doing, but the attack team is working to add sub-techniques into the entire framework. Blake, Jamie, others have been kind of furiously working on this, trying to figure out how do we add that other granularity level for people who care about that sub-technique level. So look for that in coming months. Another technique example, timing-based evasion. You know, maybe malware only runs in certain conditions at certain times. The Deloitte team added that technique, and then later, we as the attack team realized, well, that was kind of a gap we needed to fill in the framework, so added virtualization or sandbox evasion. So the team said, cool, we had that original technique, we just deprecated it. So if you find yourself in a situation where maybe there's a technique not an attack, please reach out. Our email address is on the last slide. If it doesn't quite fit in our methodology, which happens sometimes, no worries. Add it to your own internal repo. Use it for your threat use cases. And you know the key here is just that attack has a lot, but not everything. So it's perfectly fine to take that methodology, add to it. How can a blue teamer, a blue teamer, know what is detected, and if they have the right data to do it, right? How can they actually make sure of this? And this is an ongoing problem. If there's one problem I've seen people have with attack from a blue team, a network plumber point of view, this is really it. What we're gonna talk about here is mapping data to your TTPs. I showed you a brief example of it earlier where we actually use some data introspection to make that happen. But this is something that can be done with pen and paper. This can be done automatically with tooling. This can be done on a whiteboard. A lot of different options here, but it is critical to your success of mapping your network analytical uh, tooling in your SOC to the MITRE ATT&CK framework for this better use. Also, Settlers of Catan, best game ever. Best game ever. Um, avoiding a lot of jokes there, but we'll go through it. We talked earlier about T1057, process monitoring and process command line parameters. Uh, these are really great ways to detect adversaries, but they're very, they're not exactly specific, right? There's a lot of things that are gonna come up here that is legitimate traffic, that's legitimate use, or if you just look for tasklist.exe and the adversary changes it to tasklistA.exe, the alerts that we wrote earlier are completely gone. They're completely worthless. And those data sources are meant to be high level. Um, actually, in coming months, another item on our ever-growing list of things to do is kind of refactoring those data sources, trying to figure out other ones we should add. So some folks in the audience are helping out with that. If you have data sources you feel like are missing, please reach out. Let us know, because we try to make that useful for folks. Absolutely. So we showed you, you know, one example, just looking at a single technique, those data sources on the right. If you want to pull that at scale for all the techniques, we have a couple helper scripts that are awesome, uh, infrastructure team created, that will help you out pull the sticks objects for all of the different um, data sources for different techniques. That can help you get started. But there's also a wide variety of open source projects. Um, there are, are literally so many, we can't necessarily endorse any specific one. Uh, we do love Olaf, so that one comes up on the top left. But there's a lot of different ways to do this. If you're looking at something like, how do I find process command line execution? These are where you're gonna say like, oh, are you running OS query? If you're running Windows, have you enabled 4688 with full command line logging? Or do you have Sysmon? Do you have Sysmon link configured to actually pull that back? These are the sort of things that will hopefully find that information for you. And once again, this is where I'm gonna take a kind of a step out. Usually I'm pretty neutral about this. But frankly, if you have a vendor and you're paying them money for their software and you wanna use attack, talk to your vendor see what they have for it or force them to it. We as a vendor have responded because our customers have wanted attack in our product. This is something that we feel passionate about. Our customers wanted it, so we started implementing it. Find out what your vendors are doing. This is an example of exactly what we talked about here, where we're doing more data introspection to try to map to tactics and techniques. And we've also created some fun visualizations. Like I said, you might do this on a whiteboard, but all we're doing here is trying to see what the technique is, do we have data to map it, and where's it all coming through. Right? However you choose to do this, do it. That's really the takeaway here. On the defender side, also really important to remember, as we mentioned, a signal sig signature detection analytic doesn't mean you're completely covered for that technique. So we talked about with that green means 100%, you're never gonna get there. So you've gotta look for multiple different, what we call behavioral analytics. Things like seeing task lists run is a very simple one. 
but they can get more complex. And the great news is that there are a lot of repos out there that have these analytics that you can pull from. One of them, the Cyber Analytics Repository, CAR, is maintained by a team at MITRE that I work with. Um, we'll, we'll be honest, CAR was a little bit a dormant, shall we say, for a couple of years, but it's been reinvigorated recently. We added some new analytics, also looking for contributions. If you have an analytic that you think should be added, map to attack, send it to us, let us know. We are not the only game in town. Uh, Ross Wolf's in the audience from Endgame works on this uh, equal library. Equal is a language you can use to express analytics, and they have a great library of analytics mapped to attack that you can also use to pull from. The key here, you know, regardless of what language you use, which ones, we all have different data sets, different perspective, different detection ideas. So look at all of these repos as you're trying to write behavioral analytics mapped to attack. Another idea, uh, the ever impressive Florian Roth has the Sigma tool where they've actually created generic SIM rules and you can export that out to your SIM or analytic platform of choice. And now that's actually mostly mapped, I believe, to attack. So that's a phenomenal resource as well. And one other thing I want to talk to you, this was really highlighted to me last year at the MITRE attack con by the, the folks over at Red Canary where they talked about some of the five pitfalls that they've seen with attack. And one that I see customers constantly doing is they see a technique and they write a search. They see a technique and they write a search. They just go straight down, right? And frankly, some of those techniques are very broad. You might be trying to write a search for like common protocol usage and that's pretty hard. Um, or RDP, that's not gonna be super useful. Or you're gonna get overwhelmed with alerts because now you have a lot of false positives or you have a lot of things kicking off that you never attended. Uh, I really recommend, and this is a screenshot of a, a sample search that we have that actually does this. Instead of looking at that atomic indicator, that, that task list.exe or that hash, consider looking at something much more representative of what the approach is by that adversary or by that technique, right? Or te technique. So in this case, instead of looking for a process that's executed named task list that's doing process discovery, what we're saying is, hey, that's probably not run that often. Like, I don't know how many times you guys run PS on your laptop, but it's probably a lot less than VI, at least for me. That's gonna show up as a rare executable because it's an executable. And it's gonna go across any system or any platform, however you bring that in. And this maps to T1057 for our platform. But the reality is that's gonna map across a lot of different techniques and tactics within MITRE ATT&CK. So that one search actually is double, triple, quadruple hitting in terms of giving coverage. And then have that roll into your analytic platform. You wanna be able to do research and you wanted to be able to do reports later on to show, hey, after a year of adopting MITRE ATT&CK, what techniques are we catching primarily? Where are our gaps? Where have we actually had incidents where we started up an incident afterwards, and then we did the, the hot wash, and we found out that we had no detection for this technique or tactic, but we thought we did, or we didn't. Add that in. Once again, push your vendor, push your sim, push whomever it is to start integrating this taxonomy. Because you're gonna hear that word from me over and over and over again, it's taxonomy. It's a shared language where we can discuss this and have representable, repeatable results that we can metricize and analyze. And the result of that is hopefully you're gonna have a lot less Result or alerts. You're gonna have reduced alerts as this kind of goes through as you start bubbling things up through this process. Which really ties into the next part, which is how can a red teamer help this defense? Katie talked earlier about Deloitte and how they've modified the, the MITRE attack team with their own nomenclature. I love that. I think that's the biggest advantage to the MITRE framework because it is open source, it is free, it is given to the world. Don't, don't hold back just because it isn't in that matrix. Extend it, expand it, make it yours. And this applies as well for the red team. I love Atomic Red Team. We use it all the time to test things and run through things, but it does not have everything. It's not always 100% suitable for your environment. Keep the idea though, keep that taxonomy and just expand on. So just like they have an Atomic Red Team, a little bit fuzzy up there, but it says T1057 is a detection. Add a nomenclature on there for your own internal org of T1057-F for Frothly or DTT for Deloitte, whatever it be. And if, you know, the theme that we keep coming back to is just because you add on to something doesn't mean you don't think it's awesome. Like attack can be incredibly useful. Atomic Red Team is awesome. Casey Smith's in the audience, shout out to him. Um, but add to it. We each have our own use cases, our own requirements. So it's totally fine to add your own internal techniques like Deloitte did. I'm sure Red Canary would say it's totally fine to add your own atomic tests as well locally. 
all about finding different ways to test those procedures. So we talked about, you know, task list is one way a red teamer could test process discovery. Another way, using API calls. Um, shout out to my red team friends, Jamie and Mike, who were like, yeah, we love to do this because everyone's looking for a command line task list, not at API calls. And I love that example because I don't actually know how to log or detect an API call as a blue teamer. I literally, Katie brought this up and I went, yeah, but you could, but you, well, wouldn't that be, I have no clue. So this is a chance for red team and blue team to sit together where they've actually created a new method. It's not an attack. It's not in any of the TTPs. I've never heard of it. Start doing the testing, run through the logging and find out if there is a way to actually find that API, API call and add that into your defenses, right? So you move from red and blue and kind of meet in the middle and purple and really expand your defenses and make them solid. And here's just a visualization of that using the attack navigator again. So the red team goes in, does their operations, and the techniques out of that, the defenders were able to detect, make those blue, cool, maybe we got those. The techniques they couldn't detect, the ones the red teamers did that the blue teamers couldn't find, make those red. Don't stop there, we're moving towards purple teaming. So the point of red teaming is to help defenses get stronger. So red teamers, don't stop there, help the blue team figure out how to turn those red ones into blue driving those defenses using attack. And fun story, actually, um, a series of red team, blue team exercises at MITRE, that was actually how attack was created. Um, the team found that they couldn't really communicate in enough detail about exactly what was being done in those red team operations back to the blue team. So attack was born out of that. And that same kind of purple team feel, another great use case for attack. Another one, combine your powers. Captain Planet, huge Captain Planet fan, little throwback cartoon there for you. Bring in a red teamer, a CTI analyst, a defender, create a hunting party. Go find whatever adversary is a priority for you, go try to hunt and see if they're on, their, on your network. Um, this is a great way that red teams can help drive that mindset of kind of that adversary focus that attack brings as well. And attack can be a great way to plan out those hunting parties, figure out what are you looking for that an adversary might have done on your network. So you sat through about 40-ish minutes of us talking about Frothly. Mm -hmm. Hopefully you put yourself in the hot seat of one of our characters here, Grace, Allery, or Alice, Mallory, or, or Kevin. So let's, let's talk about how you can actually play this at home. We'll, we'll start the wrap up here. So Grace, CXO, team lead. Maybe it's just you, maybe you're an army of one. Uh, maybe you're a CTO. Maybe you just have to talk to the CTO and give them this sense of security. Her original issue was she had a false sense of security. She didn't actually know what was happening in the audience or in, the, in her network. And that really caused her some concern, which led her to have very sometimes abusive emails, sometimes some short communications, and then a not an understanding of what her team was talking to her about, right? She didn't share that taxonomy, that shared language. She wasn't quite sure. Now we've implemented a shared taxonomy. We have new visualizations that don't do red and green, but rather a, a, an intelligence sliding uh, idea of what comfort level. And now she can actually communicate back to her team and they can communicate her about the actual up-to-date level of their defenses. On the threat intel side, you know, Mallory was struggling. If it's not an IP, if it's not that atomic indicator, how do I use that? And I'm not gonna lie, I've been there. I've talked to a lot of analysts who've been in that same struggle bus a little bit. So she realized, well, we need to move to detecting those behaviors, those techniques, moving up that pyramid of pain to those behaviors or those TTPs that are more painful for an adversary to change, with a shout out to our good friend David Bianco on that. She also realized that you know, threats are always gonna be changing, so she's gonna have to incorporate new information about new adversary behaviors when those threats come up, when threat models that constantly change as they do when new adversaries come up. For Alice, the blue teamer, she's really good at her job, but she was taking the attack framework and just going down the list and treating it like something she just had to complete on a worksheet. By changing her mindset and looking at those techniques rather than just those very atomic indicators of hashes, IPs, and file names, she's gonna have a much better success of actually finding adversaries who are polymorphic and also reducing her overall alerts, right? So now she can prioritize and she's gonna have a better understanding of the data she has and also the gaps that she has in analytics, which hopefully will let her communicate to Grace better to get more funding to buy more licenses. And on the red team side, 
You know, Kevin, our red teamer, he wanted to help, but he wasn't sure how. Now he realizes, as many red teams do, using attack can help drive the defenders to improve. Use those red team operations, their knowledge of those gaps, to help defenders know the gaps to fill and really move towards that threat informed defense. So, takeaways here. If there's one thing I really want to get across for everyone in this room, is attack is not just for giant Deloitte's or, or giant companies with 100, 500,000 employees, right? They can be just you. You might wear a lot of different hats. You might be the threat intel person. If you don't have a threat intel team, MITRE ATT&CK provides a lot of basic analysis that you can actually go through written by people in this room, right? That you may not be able to afford on a normal day. You're going to be able to find data of where these TTPs come from that you've never seen before. If you're a big orc, finally you have that language where you can get those 15 different teams that all hate each other and are fighting for funding to actually communicate and talk and try to get through and improve that process. The next one starts small. I go back to the phrase, don't let the perfect be the enemy of the good enough. Maybe you just start with a single technique, a single detection, a single group, but start somewhere. Start to improve your defenses and you're just gonna have to iterate. None of us are perfect, we're never 100% green, but start somewhere, start small, be realistic, and iterate and improve your detections. And the final thing, if you really wanna, like we said, uh, super speed your attack integration, come up with a tool that can be collaborative and that you can cooperate across, right? So you can communicate, do real-time updates. I'm a huge fan of how MITRE has the back end for MITRE is actually JSON API friendly, so you can actually dynamically update all these TTPs as they make the changes and update things. This is huge. Build that framework, get those people communicating. Even if you just start with Excel, you're doing all right. So some uh, quick thank yous. Um, I am also a very passionate uh, advocate for underrepresented people in cyber. This is something I believe in quite heavily and try to do quite a bit of in my personal life. Uh, Katie and I were overjoyed when we found out Black Hat actually sponsored, allowed us to bring two students to Black Hat for free passes. So thank you, Black Hat. That is awesome. Uh, also, thank you to Splunk because they actually paid for travel and expenses for these two people, uh, specifically Hyann and Kara, which is awesome, uh, really helping out the community. And also to our two wonderful people who came, Adriana and Divi. As we all know, we don't, none of us do this alone. I'm here, but there's a huge attack team behind me. Um, special shout out to Blake Strom, one of the original creators of attack. He brought me on this team, been an awesome mentor and leader. Um, Adam Pennington from the attack team helped out a ton with slides, helped me figure out what I was going to say. Um, there's a whole bunch of others on the attack team that are here this week. So please talk to all of them. I'm really just up here as a representative of what the broader team does. We're, we're, none of us are alone. Same for me. Uh, my team, David, John, Johan, and Dave, uh, they're really informing a lot of what I do here. So just acting as a representative. We talked about a lot of different things. This is a list for all the software. We're going to be tweeting this out. Black Hat will be releasing our slides soon. Uh, so if you want to take a photo real quick, great. Otherwise, catch it on the tweets. Which brings me to the last slide. I'm Ryan Kovar. I'm Katie Nichols. And that's all we got. All we got. Thank you very much.